Okay, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and try to create a QQ plot for this data set. And uh, the data set is given to me in my open math, and I'm going to create the QQ plot in Desmos.com. So once again, I need to highlight all this data, copy it, and bring it into Desmos. So I just do the highlighting. I right click and I copy. Then I go to Desmos Graphing Calculator and open it up. I'm going to name this list X. So I just type an uppercase X and an equal sign with a square bracket opening. And then I just Control and V to paste my data. This data set has 58 values. So I'm going to go ahead and create the Z scores for these. 58 values. I'm going to call it Z underscore Y to give myself a Z with a subscript of Y. And this is going to be equal to, and now I'm going to calculate the Z scores for these uh, 58 values. Um, the way we calculate a Z score is that the Z score is equal to the value, which are going to be those 58 values, minus the average of those values divided by the standard deviation of those values. So basically, I just need to use this formula to calculate all those z-scores. And that's not going to be too hard. Let's see. So I'm just going to come here, and I'm going to type in a parenthesis. I'm going to take the uppercase x and subtract from it the mean of those x values. So I'm going to find the average of those 58 x values by clicking the keyboard scrolling over to functions and scrolling down to the mean function so i'm going to click on mean and i want the average or mean of list x so i type in uppercase x and close both of those parentheses and then i just have to divide by the standard deviation so once again i'm dividing by i go to functions dividing by the standard deviation which is under statistics it's the third one down here stdev and that's my standard deviation of capital X. So these values will be the Z scores for all of these values in my X list. Oh, there's one thing that we have to make sure of. We have to make sure that the values in this list are sorted. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to type in SORT and open a parenthesis so that it'll sort this list. So now, this is a list of the sorted z-scores from this list. So this list is the sorted z-scores from that original list. So now that I have all my z-scores sorted, I can go ahead and create the theoretical distribution. To create this theoretical distribution, I'm going to type i, which is going to be my... I'm going to create a counting variable that's just going to count from 1 to 58. So i is equal to, I'm going to open up a bracket so I can create a list, type 1, comma, three dots, three periods, another comma, and then 58. So that's every number from 1 to 58, and then I, or every counting number, I should say, every positive integer from 1 to 58. Then I'm going to close the bracket. So now I have my counting variable close this keyboard. Now that I have the counting variable, I'm going to go ahead and calculate percentages. Basically, the smallest value in this list is going to be bigger than a certain percentage of the values in the list. Since there are 58 values, it's actually going to be bigger than um, 1 over... Uh, what is it? 116 of all the values, whatever fraction, whatever percent that is, 1 over 116. But anyway, the way we're going to actually calculate those probabilities, we're going to call that list uppercase P, and it's going to equal the values in the list I minus a half divided by 58. So basically, the ith value is not bigger than I values, it's bigger than one less than that. And to correct for continuity, instead of taking away 1, we're only going to take away 0.5.
So it's going to be I, but minus 0.5. That's a continuity correction. And then we're just going to find the percentage. I'm going to put that in parentheses. To find the percentage, I'm just going to divide it by the total number of values, which is 58. So that's going to give me percentages for just to the left of each of my values, telling me which, how many, what percentage of the values the value I'm currently looking at is bigger than. So that's a list of all the probabilities, 58 probabilities. Now I do the actual theoretical z-scores here by creating a normal distribution first. So these are going to be my actual theoretical z-scores. So I'm going to do z underscore x, click the right arrow button, then equals. And now to create this theoretical distribution, I'm going to create a normal distribution. So I'm going to type normal and then normal um, DIST for distribution. So normal DIST. If you open and close a parenthesis, it'll give you the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Then I hit the period or the dot. And then I'm going to type the word inverse, I-N-V-E-R-S-E, and then CDF, the letters CDF. So inverse CDF. I'm going to open up a parenthesis, and inside of this inverse CDF, I'm going to put P, my list of uh, percentages or probabilities. Then I'm going to close the parentheses. So this is now a theoretical list of... Uh, of um, z-scores for from a standard normal distribution. What I want to do is I want to create a scatter plot with the theoretical normal distribution as the x values and the actual values, the actual z-scores I got from my data list as my y values. I want those z-scores to be going on the y-axis. And I want to compare that to a straight line, y equals x. So there's the straight line, y equals x. And I'm going to create the ordered pairs for which the first coordinate is going to be the theoretical y values, which I called, or the theoretical um, standard normal distribution z-scores, which I call zx. Then comma. And on the y-axis, I'm going to put the actual z-scores, which I call z-y. And then it creates the QQ plot. So I can get rid of this and just go look at the QQ plot here. When I'm looking at this, there's no pattern, no systematic pattern. It looks like the data is just roughly falling along this straight line. So it looks like this data actually does come from a population that is normally distributed based on the QQ plot.